Supply and demand offer a powerful framework to help us understand price fluctuations in a market. If you're well versed in finance, you are familiar with the concept of a balance sheet. It paints a picture of the financial situation of a business, your assets on one side, debt on the other side. Then you start getting a picture of your equity or net worth. Well, this is also a useful concept for commodity markets. A balance sheet for commodities summarizes the market environment in a brief and concise way by showing the state of supply and demand and ultimately it helps you form expectations about prices. Let's go over a couple of definitions to start with. The law of supply states that the quantity of a good's supply, that is the amount producers or businesses offer for sale, rises as the market price increases and the quantity supplied falls as the price decreases. Conversely, the law of demand says that the quantity of a good demanded falls as the price increases and vice versa. And trends in supply and demand convey information that help recognize price movements. I'm going to use the corn market example in the US to illustrate how powerful the concepts of supply and demand are. We have an open border with the US for a vast majority of commodities and prices are first and foremost set in the US market given its pure size. There are obviously domestic factors that matter when we think of Canadian prices, but it's easier to start with the US market. Let's take a closer look at corn using information gathered from a report from the United States Department of Agriculture, or the USDA. The most well-known report about supply and demand is known as the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates, or WASD for short. It is published once a month and available on the USDA website if you're interested in giving it a closer look. Let's construct the supply side of the balance sheet for corn. Domestic production is a function of harvested acres and yields. Year 1 in the example shows the actual production, while year 2 can be thought of as expectations about production in year 2. In this example, you see that harvested acres are identical, but yields are expected to be lower in year 2, resulting in lower domestic production. Now, to get an idea of the overall supply, you must add imports to U.S. corn production as well as the stocks that were carried from the previous year into this marketing year. In this example, more stocks are carried into year two, yet the available supply is expected to be smaller in year two than in year one, given the lower production in year two. But we're not done yet. We still need to investigate the demand side of the market. Demand is based on total usage. You can create multiple categories for this, but we'll simply look at exports, feed, and food and other usage, which would include corn ethanol. In the current example, feed usage is expected to grow from year one to year two. On the other hand, exports are expected to be weaker. The next step is to combine supply and demand together. Available supply minus total demand will yield a projection of the end of year stocks. In this example, Year-end stocks are expected to be lower in year two than in year one. What does it all say about the market? Well, we have one statistic or measure that describes the dynamics between supply and demand. It's the stock to use ratio. It provides an idea of the balance between supply and demand and summarizes all that we discussed in this clip into a single measure. So that's quite powerful. Formally, a stock to use ratio is the level of inventory of a commodity at a point in time expressed as a share of everything that is being used throughout the year. For example, saying that a stock to use ratio is projected to be 16.7% at the end of the marketing year means that inventories of stocks will be 16.7% of everything that was used in the supply chain. Total use can be impacted by the demand for animal feed, human consumption, or exports. If total use increases, it would lower the stock to use ratio. Markets will react to information in a stock to use ratio. For example, the year two stock to use ratio suggests that the balance between supply and demand will be tighter than the previous year, and thus we should expect higher prices in that case. The objective is not for operations or businesses to form their own projection of prices, but use the information as a guide to understand price movements and design effective marketing plans.